So, I've been wanting to make this video for a long while now, but I've been very busy trying to finish up my never-ending PhDs. <laughs> Don't know why it's been taking me this long to finish. Must be the white supremacist patriarchy at work. Patriarchy? Huh. Now that I think about it, my committee members are all white males. Don't know why I didn't notice that before. The more you think you cannot be affected, the more likely you are to be affected. So anyways, uh, about three weeks ago, or actually, I don't know how long it's been now, uh, somebody posted this article on Facebook. The person who posted it was my Facebook friend because we had uh, Taekwondo together when I was an undergrad. She's a doctor now and she wanted people to reflect on this article. So that's what I'm going to do here. The title of this article is The Best Way Male Physicians Can Help Their Female Colleagues. Basically, this cisgendered white male doctor uh, who carries the weight of the original sin of his kind told one of his female doctor colleagues about a patient's quote-unquote harassment incident. Uh, which you'll see later just how wicked the deed was. And he said that it's problematic how his female colleague brushed off as if uh, she needed a coat in an 80 degree weather. And he goes on describing what happened and of course he's going to be dedicating an entire half of paragraph unnecessarily grandiose details explaining just why or why he needed a partner in the whole thing. Then he proceeds to describe the harassment, which is simply the patient stopping their work to ask the female doctor for a cup of water. And if that's not blatantly sexist enough for you, he called her, Honey! Oh my god, how traumatized she must have been. Turns out, this uh, doctor with a vagina had some balls, and she shuts this patient up by informing him that uh, she preferred to be called formally before complying to his request. So she could obviously handle the situation on her own, but hey, that's not nearly enough. Who needs a strong woman when you have literally white knights in white, eh? Our mangina doctor um, states that the fact that his colleague quickly handles the situation with ease is both impressive and disheartening. Um, why is it disheartening? Well, because of how effortless she shuts him down. You know, just like how any man would have handled a similar situation. Apparently, he expected her to have more of an emotional response, like breaking down or crying or some shit. You know, hey, why aren't you acting more like a woman? So this is the irony of feminism. When a woman acts like a woman, no, that's gender stereotype. But when a woman acts like a man, no, something must have been wrong because you're not supposed to be used to acting like a man. So there's simply no way out for men and women alike in this ideology, is there? Anyway, so I made a response to my Facebook friend on the matter. I uh, wish I saved it, but basically what I said was if female p patients ever run across a handsome male doctor, they would say something similar, um, you know, something similarly sexualized about this male doctor too. You know, kind of like... Some guy. Whoa. I don't normally like to fly, but I am changing my mind. <laughs> Listen, we don't have much time, so we want to play, okay? I'm ready. I'm ready to play anytime, too, Max, all right? You know the rules? You can come fly. Okay, with me you don't anytime. get them like this that often, all right? To which she responded There is a difference. It's more like catcalls down the street for women, whereas for men, they are admired. Women are treated as if they got to that position because of their looks and not their mind. 
where men in those situations are viewed as having it all easy on ice and smart. They are viewed as doctors still. Yes. So then I made an elaborate response. What I basically said was, "You might be surprised what kind of sexist situations men experience on a day-to-day -day basis. You exper you experience these things as a woman because society, including women, of course, puts the pressure on men to be the pursuer. So men have to constantly say nice things to women just to be able to touch her, let alone getting to second base. And now women are so used to it that they just take it for granted." And they're even more used to it that now women scorn it whenever they experience this. And I sent her a bunch of videos, including the Nora Vincent becoming a man video, to prove my point. She then, of course, unfriended me and blocked me from her channel. I mean, sorry, her Facebook. Very mature thing to do, of course. Look, at this point, I call myself an anti-feminist. But I can sympathize with a lot of the stuff the feminists are complaining that women are going through. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it's really the fact that I can separate my personal feelings and experiences from an ideology, and I can act like a mature adult. I personally don't like being called "honey, sweetie, darling, baby" either. Not from men, not from women. However. Do these women not notice that women call each other these names all the freaking time? If you don't like it, then just calmly tell the person that you don't like it and ask him not to call you that again. Or if you really wants to make a point, you can ask him whether he would be okay with being called these things. And if he still said yes, then you can politely ask him to not do that to you. See how in this article it says. I've seen male patients discount the medical opinions of female physicians to their faces, ignore their presence, act abrasively and antagonistically towards women one minute, then turn into model patients when seen by a man the next. Okay, so this is the very common objection by feminists who say that ooh, poor women were always perceived to be easygoing. Well, that might be true, but on the flip side. It means that women are perceived to be nice. Isn't that supposed to be a good thing? Honestly, I hear so much from feminists that men should do this, men should do that. You know, men should change their behavior, stop being so sexist. Men should tre tread more carefully on women's feelings. You know, these feminists—they don't deny that men and women are inherently different on the average. I mean, they would never ever say the specific statement, but they have implied it a lot. Basically, every single time they bring up anything that can be under the umbrella term of toxic masculinity, that's implying that men are different from women. They don't realize that men just think differently than women do. Men tend to be problem solvers. When men run into problem, they tend to first. Think how to solve the problem, then feelings. Whereas when women run into a problem, they tend to first think about how it's making them feel, then how to solve the problem. And you wonder why men are dominating STEM fields. You know, the fields where your feelings just don't fucking matter. It's all about finding solutions to problems. And you wonder why women are dominating social science and the liberal arts and humanities, where it's all about. Expressing your personal opinions and feelings. Feminists are always complaining about how women are not encouraged into STEM fields. I have actually had an encounter where this big shot social science professor literally made all of the graduate students working with him to take a computer science class involving heavy programming. Now, in just two weeks, half of the students dropped the class.、And、guess what? All females. The female students that eventually stayed there are all Asian women who, despite their resilience, ended up having to ask the men in the class or their husbands, who know programming, to do most of the homeworks for them. But it's obviously patriarchy. I mean, how dare that professor make his female students to take a class that would teach them some useful skills for the job market, right? And obviously, the reason they all drop is because there are too many men in the class. I do think that both 
men and women can learn something from the opposite sex. You know, feminist women are always perpetuating this meme that, oh, if only men would learn something from women, then they would not walk astray. Well, you know, next time you want men to learn something from women, why don't you take a big step back and... And literally FUCK YOUR OWN FACE! And I will rain down on a godly fucking firestorm upon you. You're gonna have to call the fucking United Nations and get a fucking binding resolution to keep me from fucking destroying you. <laughs> Just kidding. Sort of. What I really wanted to say was that why don't you think about what you can learn from men? Maybe you can learn not to use emotions to judge everything because, you know, most of life's problems can only be solved with practical solutions. Maybe you can learn some logic and some reasoning skills. Then you can actually earn that respect from men instead of being entitled to it. You want to break gender stereotypes? Start acting like it.